We recently announced the launch of Longevity, our first consumer product, which of course is very exciting times for us. But what makes this even more special is the collaboration we've developed with Chromadex, who are a true leader in the field of NAD Plus research and supplementation. As many of you know, NAD Plus is a vital element to our cells' health and energy production, and it plays a huge role in healthy longevity. Uh, that's why we're so excited that Niagen, Chromadex's patented form of NR, is the hero ingredient in our new supplement. Now, uh, Rob Freed, who I've spoken to for many years, is CEO of Chromadex, has been a, a real leading light in the mission to revolutionize cellular health through groundbreaking research and products. And I'm delighted to say that Rob joins us here today. So, Rob, how are you? I'm fine. Better than most. Not as good as some. Thank you for good. the invite. Yeah, good to hear. And uh, Rob, just from your perspective, of course, we've announced our uh, our partnership. What, what, in your perspective, makes that special? Well, I think that you're an influential voice amongst those that want to be uh, ahead of the curve on anti-aging technologies. We still think to this day, aside from diet and exercise, the best intervention that's available out there is to elevate your NAD levels. It's very impressive the work that's being done on longevity in general, but still today, stay very thin, move around every day and elevate your NAD levels. And we've shown repeatedly that the best way to do that is to take niagen. Yeah, well, I, I was taking it in its original true niagen form, which uh, you know is one of my staples of my of my regimen. But of course, um, what you're doing at Chromadex, you're investing very heavily in NAD Plus research, obviously having developed niagen in the first place. Uh, but what makes niagen stand out compared to other NAD Plus boosters in terms of kind of like you know, efficiency and long term health benefits? Well, the one thing that we've shown is the the safest and the most efficient way to elevate NAD levels is through nicotinamide riboside. And the only legal, safe, proven, regulatory approved version of nicotinamide riboside is niagen, which Chromadex has you know, studied repeatedly over the years and has patented over the years and received regulatory approvals over the years and on and on and on. There are companies that are promoting NAD boosters. A lot of people are actually literally selling NAD, which is the same as sawdust. It actually probably does some harm to take NAD itself. If you don't take a precursor to NAD, the, the NAD molecule is a very large molecule and it's a nucleotide. Same problem that NMN has, which means there's a phosphate group on the perimeter. That blocks entry into the cell. So you ingest it, it makes its way into the bloodstream. It endeavors to get up into the cell and fails. Yeah. That, that attempt, which is dramatic with NAD, a little less dramatic with NMN, causes in, uh, inf friction and inflammation. Eventually, it, the phosphate breaks off and the NAD molecule breaks apart into smaller molecules, one of which is actually NR which then upregulates up into the cell very cleanly and efficiently, and then can eventually converts back into NAD once inside the cell. So yeah. the safest, most efficient and best way, which is proven over and over and over again with countless studies is niagen. So let's, let's talk about um, uh, NAD plus research and kind of where the future of that is heading, especially in relation to new developments in aging science. Cause you guys have got a lot of studies going on, right? Yes. So what are the areas that you're kind of focusing on, Rob? So as you know, there are at, at this point, 34 clinical peer reviewed published studies on nicotinamide riboside. There are approximately yep. 40 more ongoing presently. The initial studies, and there are over a hundred preclinical studies that have been published. And the initial studies were simply safety. Uh, then there were studies to prove the efficacy as an NAD booster. And then it sort of moved into more direct indications and we're starting to see numerous publications on even disease states. Some are just age related indications. Some are actually disease states. But what is remarkable is the incredible consistency with the positive results that we're seeing. So, and what's unique is that we really very much understand the mechanisms of action. So with, with a certain amount of consistency, we can predict which indications or which conditions would be affected. Certainly anything inflammation related, like we now have eight peer reviewed published clinical studies on inflammation related disorders. And that ranges from the lungs to the brain, to the muscle, to the heart, across the board inflammation. 
Uh, not every type of inflammation, but most and some of the real big ones, IL-2, IL-6, IL-11, IL-16, uh, many. And, and that inflammation is so directly related to aging in general, but also specifically age-related conditions. Then, of course, we understand that when you elevate NAD, one of the key things that it does is it elevates mitochondrial biogenesis or mitogenesis, if you will, and mitochondrial function. So diseases related to mitochondrial function seem to benefit. And obviously, one of the most notable and furthest along is Parkinson's disease. Okay. And we are, we've published clinical studies on Parkinson's, early stage studies, but now we're three and a half years into a four-year study on Parkinson's disease coming out of Norway, which uh, has 400 participants, 200 of which take a placebo, 200 take a gram of niagen a day for a year. Okay. So with that study will be completed sometime next year. Of course, it's a complete, you know, double-blinded study. We, we won't know the results for a while after that, but we're very excited about that amongst many others. So obviously, these, they're, with all of these trials that are going on, this is enabling you to expand your vocabulary and obviously look at the, the way that the claims around the product go. I mean, how do you see these results informing the future of Niagen? Are, are you, do you see a bridge into you know, more clinical grade applications in the future? We do. We do not view Chromadex as a dietary supplement company per se. We view Chromadex as an NAD company. And what we understand and have really always understood is that the applications for NAD far transcend dietary supplements itself. So we recently announced uh, entry into a new vertical, the, the IV and injection vertical. We launched that a couple of months ago. It took many years to get to that place. It required a level of FDA approval. It's pharmaceutical grade material, not food grade material. material. We did an independent third party controlled study to prove the efficacy and safety and compare it to straight NAD IV infusions, which it is significantly superior to for the reasons I gave before. Uh, and we, we launched that a, a couple of months ago with, with success. But in the future, we see actual endeavors into a, a pharma strategies, actual pharmaceutical. And we uh, earlier this year received a rare pediatric designation and orphan disease designation for ataxia telangiectasia, a form of ataxia, an okay. orphan disease where children age quite rapidly. And we already have one clinical study published that shows Niagen has a therapeutic uh, benefit for these kid, these kids with this un unfortunate disorder. So that's a, a high priority for us, and we are pursuing that uh, as a uh, as a drug. We Very also know that there are benefits in the in the cosmetic area. You know, uh, skin cells have NAD as well, and we have uh, plenty of data to support the thesis that elevating NAD in skin cells will improve on many levels, elasticity, age spots, uh, actual brightness, if you will, uh, and, and other things. So we see that as an area for us. And what Chromadex has positioned the company where we could supply the ingredient to certain very select partners, such as yours, such as you. Uh, and we have our own brand, True Niagen. So we yep. will take it market by market, channel by channel. But the long-term vision for the company is to be to continue to be the premier NAD company in in multiple verticals. We anticipate that the more the general public becomes informed about NAD and the safest way to manage your NAD levels, the more they like uh, Chromadex. Yeah, and I guess just to, you know, obviously there's a, a lot of there's a lot of issues recently about what's been happening with with NMN specifically in the in the U.S. market. What, what's your commentary on that, Rob? You know, what should people be doing in relation to that? We think NMN is an effective way to elevate NAD. It's not nearly as effective as niacin, but it still works. Years ago, we knew that. Um, there is the issue that it is also a nucleotide, and so there are now three studies out there that question the safety of NMN. Um, there was a study that came out recently uh, and showed that NMN had an, a, a negative impact on an enzyme called CD38, which is a, a big NAD consumer, whereas niagen was not. 
there's also been a, a kidney study out there, which is troubling uh, about NMN. It, 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 so it, it does work in elevating NAD. We're, we're not confident about the safety of NMN. But what we also know, and um, David Sinclair has even shown this, is that be, the way NMN is manufactured, mostly overseas, outside the U.S., mostly in, in Asia, uh, we see the presence of endotoxins because of the manufacturing presence. So that adds another safety level. When we started here, we knew about the drug preclusion rule at the FDA. Okay. You knew about that when it was there. Absolutely knew about it. And All right. we considered NMN as something that we would invest in. In fact, Chromadex has a patent on NMN. We chose not to pursue NMN partly because we knew niogen was better. And why pursue another ingredient that doesn't work as well as niogen? But also because we knew that Metro Biotech, which is one of David Sinclair's companies, had already begun doing research on NMN for drug application. And the, and the Deshaies rule is quite clear. It, it quite clearly says that if you take an ingredient and you start as a drug, you cannot then pivot to a supplement. But if you start as a supplement, you can then pivot to a drug. And they had already declared and become, uh, done, announced studies on NMN. We were fully aware of it. So we knew that, that eventually the FDA would become aware of it and, and limit NMN's use. And because of that, the companies that you're seeing playing in the NMN space are companies you generally don't want to be in business with. They're, the, they're companies that are happily ignoring the FDA's ruling. So if they happily ignore the FDA's ruling, what else are they ignoring? Yeah, no, that's understood, Rob. And of course, you know, we, we've known each other a long time. And of course, it's, for us, it's a, uh, an absolute honor to have uh, Niagen as a key component of our, of our products. So, Rob, I guess I'm very interested, if I may, to fire some quick questions at you to kind of to see, see how you respond to them. Are you up for it? Of course. Okay, great. So what's the biggest benefit of NAD Plus that most people don't actually know about? I, I would say inflammation. Okay. And if you were to describe the benefits of niogen in one word, what would that be? Youth. So, Rob, what's the most exciting thing happening in NAD Plus research today? I would say the Parkinson's research. We don't know the results, of course, uh, but we know the early stage studies uh, and we understand the mechanisms of action. There are many, there are millions of people who suffer from Parkinson's disease, and there really is only one drug approved to this point. So we are very hopeful that Niagen will offer some relief. Going forward five years from now, right? We've been in this industry a long time. Where would you see the industry in five years' time? The longevity industry? Yeah. You know, I think we're all going to bend down to tie our shoe, and we, when we stand up again, we're going to be living in a world that we didn't understand just moments ago. You know, if, if, you, if you read dramatically about these breakthroughs in AI, it almost seems as though the sky is the limit. Anything that we could dream about and imagine could come true. I choose to look at it in a positive light, and if we have if we can somehow manage to get unlimited data storage, really anything that we can imagine could happen. It, it, it could end up being that the solution, the longevity solution is a data solution. Mm, interesting. And of course, you know, you're from the, uh, the movie industry as a former part of your career. What, what do you take on the movie industry and AI? You know, Soro is about to, they're about to come out with the new uh, animation AI software that they've been talking about for a long time. And I've seen early versions of it, and it's kind of impressive. My wife is an actress. Uh, she has been for all the years that we've been together. I do believe that you're going to, uh, I, I don't believe that human creativity is going to be obviated anytime soon. Yep. But the ability to ma to make uh, television shows, animations, and films that are you know photo real with actors that are even no longer living, and replicate incredible performances, will have a dramatic impact on the industry. On a, in a positive sense, you'll see higher quality films made for lower cost. 
Yeah, that's, uh, it's, uh, I've been reading a lot about that myself. But Rob, look, so thank you so much for joining us today. And on behalf of myself and the team, thank you so much for your partnership uh, with Niagen. We're very excited about it. And of course, we're just going to go sell some product now. As are we. Good luck. Thank you for the invite.